Seven Days to Die has finally come out. Are you excited? You better not be. After around 12 years in development, Seven Days to Die has entered version 1.0. They've finally done it. They've left Alpha and entered into a full release. Some of you may have noticed something disconcerting with that statement already. In case you don't know what Seven Days to Die is and you've clicked on this video just out of morbid curiosity, I'll keep it brief. Seven Days to Die is a zombie survival, regular survival, survival horror, base building, exploration, action or horror, co-op, sandbox, with RPG elements by a small team called the Fun Pimps. The title itself is actually a bit of a misnomer, as the goal is not to try and die in seven days. The seven days is how long you have to prepare to survive a night of zombie attacks. The gameplay loop consists of going out to explore and find resources that you can then use to craft weapons and armor and build defenses around your base in preparation for that seventh day when, at night, a large wave of zombies attack. This is something that happens every seven days with an increasing difficulty. Seven Days to Die first released into Alpha in 2013 where it looked very much like a dime a dozen Minecraft clone, those sort of games that were flooding the market around the time, mixed with r realistic zombie survival. I don't know when I was first made aware of it, but it was probably when the Yogg's cast first played it, so around 10 years ago. Over time, as games tend to do during development, it slowly changed into roughly what we see today. I was going to try and include more about how the game has changed over time, but this was never meant to be a video about the development, and I felt like as I was trying to learn more about it, or write more about it, it my video was losing focus. This is meant to be a rant. I am ranting about the game. This is a rant about the release of the game, not the development of it. But some of the development will come into it because, it, you know, it will have to. You can't release a game that hasn't been developed yet. Although, Seven Days to Die certainly have tried. A few months ago, the Fun Pimps released a forum post explaining that the game was going to leave Alpha 22, I think it was, and enter version 1.0. It was, in their words, an Alpha Exodus. And along with that migration, there was to be a major update to the game, promising a whole plethora of changes, including zombie variants, new animals, a new gore system, new pals, and among many other things, a console launch. But wait, that's not all, as that's the first of four updates that will bring the game into its full release. Hold on. Four updates. Yep, they released a roadmap explaining that over the course of the next year, there'll be an additional three content updates after the first major update, which is the version 1.0 release. These updates will add an improved weather system, a wardrobe, spawn near a friend, a new quest type, twice, a menu overhaul, a story mode, Steam workshop support, outfit DLCs, apparently, you think you can hide microtransactions in the tiny print on this low-resolution roadmap? I see that. You can't hide that from me. Now, at first glance, this might just sound like I'm being mean to a developer who has been, you know, who's promising updates. Updates are very normal after a game has been released. It happens all the time and is expected and common practice at this point. It's a good thing. But usually... The game hasn't been in development for over a decade, and you're only just now adding the option to spawn near a friend. That's where the crux of this annoyance and this rant comes from, is that this game has been in development for over 12 years at this point, and those are the things that they're adding post-release. This game has been released. The release of the game was a few days ago. And those are the things that they are promising to release after the release of the game that's been in development for over 10 years. And on the topic of this new content, Seven Days to Die started with a Kickstarter campaign and got a commendable, but what is actually pretty shit, $500,000. I just want to go on a brief tangent here, just to explain what I just said, because $500,000 sounds like a lot of money. You... You'd think I was jealous of $500,000 if I made fun of someone for earning $500,000. But, I, well, I am. I am very jealous of someone having $500,000. I keep saying jealous. $500,000 is only commendable because the original goal was $200,000. I'm going to make some wild estimates here, because I do like making spurious claims. 
According to census.gov, in 2013, the median income for a household in America was around $52,000. If we make a couple of assumptions that most houses have two people in them, we can make the, the broad, very broad and very vague estimate that the median income for an American is around $25,000. As a result, based purely on these numbers that for all intents and purposes I've pulled out of my ass, it would cost around $25,000 just for one person to work on this game for a year. And then they were going to use this $200,000 to hire the quote, extra artists, animators and programmers to do it right. I don't know why there's a comma after extra. It, it just is. That money was never going to get them anywhere near what they wanted, even with any extra money that would come through Steam sales. Game development is an incredibly costly experience. Not only do you have to pay for the people, which is very expensive, you have to pay for all the software, you have to pay for licensing music and assets, you have to pay for I, said, I know I said software, but the engine, unless they're making it themselves. You have to pay to put it on a platform to have it be sold. Just because you don't necessarily have a publisher, it still has to be published. <laughs> and you're the one that has to pay for it. So, with this $500,000, did they do what they said they were going to do with that money? No. No, of course they didn't. It's Kickstarter. Of course they fucking didn't. They may have hired people, I don't know, I don't care, I just want to know if everything that they said they would add into the game is in the game, as they have had plenty of time to do it. And as I mentioned, n they haven't. There is things on the Kickstarter page that just isn't in this game, which I would like to remind you is over 11 years old. There's no dynamic story generation, there's no tracking or domesticating wildlife, I don't think there's a lunar cycle, but honestly, that might just mean day and night, but... That's a pretty stupid way to write that. The 5x5 crafting grid isn't in the game anymore. There's no smell system as far as I can tell. There is no real-time structural integrity, whatever the hell that means. There's no distraction system. There's no skill tree. There's no finishing moves. There's no zombie nomad mode. There's no cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria! <laughs> Animals can't turn into zombies. Some items appearing below this point may appear in a post-released update. There is very limited application of the NPC characters, there are no safe houses, the multiplayer is just the single player with other people, and there's no customizable vehicles. From where I'm sitting looking at this list of features, they've just chosen seemingly at random which stretch goals and features they want to add and when. For $500,000, they were going to add non-blocky terrain. They were going to change it into the terrain that we do see now. Which is like, yeah, they did make it past $500,000, but there's a lot in the game before that. That was a final stretch goal. That should be the last thing they're adding into the game. That shouldn't have been an update that's happened years ago. That should be the update that's happening now. That should have been the release update. And I know that design specs change over time, but people gave money for these features. I didn't even know that they had a Kickstarter, I'll be honest. The only reason I looked it up was because in the Q&A of the version 1.0 announcement post on the forum, one of the questions they asked themselves is, what about the Kickstarter stretch goals? Where they admit that some of these features will come post-launch. I want to reiterate, they've been making this game for 11 fucking years. This is abysmal. Like I said, design specs can change. If these things weren't meant to be in the game because the vision changed, good. It means that you can have a critical look at your ideas and trim what you think is bad or unnecessary. But here they're explicitly saying that they still want to add these things into the game. So why are these things that were supposed to be in the game for its 2014 release not in the game for its 2020 fucking 4 release? Now I know what you're thinking, so don't rush to buy the game just yet, there's still more. Seven Days to Die, the alpha, was available on PS4 and Xbox One. Version 1.0 is not. They are not updating the last gen console versions to the full release. And they're removing it from the store. You can still play it if you own it, but you can't play the full version. The full version of a game that started development before the Xbox One was even released. And you might be thinking, because I've written it into the script that you are, that's fine, it's an old console, 
people have moved on to the current generation anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. And you're not completely wrong, hypothetical viewer. If the majority of people have moved on to the current generation of consoles, there's not really any reason to update the old version. And, you know, these people have already bought the game, so it's already on their account that they own it, so they should just be able to download the full version on the new consoles, R right? Fucking right? No! Fucking no! You have to buy the game again. I haven't mentioned the price yet, because most early access games will specify somewhere that the price is going to change. That's just an inevitability of making a game, is that you buy into it early to give them money, and it's cheaper. That makes sense. I'm fine with that. And you then get access to the game when it fully releases. That's the handshake that you usually agree on when buying a game from someone who releases something in early access. I was going to try and reveal the price at the end to be like this big shocker, but I've changed my mind. I'm revealing it now. The game now costs $45. 40 pounds. That is a lot of money for the game that you're looking at currently on screen. That's a lot of money for any game. £40 is a lot of money. You could have bought Elden Ring for that price during the previous sale. You could buy basically any game on Steam for that price. You could buy probably every game on Steam for that price when there's a sale on, and they're asking it for this game. Every early access game will always include somewhere that they're going to increase the price once the game fully releases. That's expected. We all know that. But generally, you expect the game to get better over time. You expect that the game that you have actually bought is going to be better than the game that you are given when you do buy it. If you were the owner of the game on last gen consoles, you have to repurchase the game to play the full version. To give the devs some credit, you do get 25% off if you already owned the game. But if you know I own the game, why don't you just give it to me? I've owned it on Steam for god knows how long, so I get spared the full release tax, but it's still a scummy thing to do, I think we can all agree. The console edition isn't even the full game at launch. It doesn't have random world generation, doesn't have a level editor, plus other differences. So console players are paying nearly $50 for the full release, and they're not even getting the full release. These features are supposedly going to get added in one of the post-released updates, but it still begs the question of how far up your arse is your thumb if you've been sitting on your hands for the past decade? This game was meant to come out in 2014, and to top it all off, it's been removed from Game Pass, so I hope you've got $50 spare for this incomplete game. In the background, I've probably put in uh, me just idly playing the game. The, this game, this is the full release. What you have been seeing in the background is the full release of the game. The game, this is 1.0, you can probably see in the corner that it does say 1.0. This is the $45 game that has taken them a decade to make, and it's just shameful. On the forum post for the release, the fun pimp said this. This milestone release heralds a groundbreaking evolution in the survival horror genre, packed with new, a wealth of new content, innovative new features, polish, transformative quality of life improvements, optimizations, and revolutionary gameplay systems. No other game offers a fully buildable, fully destructible, truly open world where every location can be explored inside and out, without load screens and with unmatched random world generation. Dive into the definitive zombie survival sandbox RPG that started it all. I'm not trying to pronounce the map name, I, I ain't doing that. This is pretty much just an outright lie, all of it. It's a delusion of grandeur at best. The game is none of these things, aside from being fully destructible and open world. It is not groundbreaking. Maybe back in 2013 it would have been, but that's a stretch. When this game hit version 1.0, it was not packed with a wealth of new content. It was not packed with innovative new features. There was no polish, no transformative quality of life improvements, few optimizations, and no revolutionary gameplay systems. I'm imagining those like old arcade cabinet and NES style adverts of like children being sucked into the game world or having all their hair blown off or whatever with just how amazing it is when you call it a revolutionary gameplay system. That's the me problem, I'm aware, but they knew what they were doing. The only thing they do have is a fully destructible, fully buildable world with no loading screens, but if that's what it takes to be groundbreaking, then no ground was broken, because Minecraft did that in 2009. 
oh, actually, you know what? You're, it's just me being an idiot. There's a loading screen in Minecraft when you enter the nether. If you would like a closer comparison, because admittedly Minecraft doesn't have real-time structural integrity, take Valheim. Sure, there are loading screens, but I'm a big boy. I can wait a few seconds for a dungeon to load. Valheim has base building and survival mechanics and a semi-destructible environment. It even has a system where you can be attacked by a large wave of enemies. You can farm, you can hunt, you can explore, you can mine, you can craft, you can fight enemies. It has RPG elements, it has NPC merchants, and it looks phenomenal. Valheim didn't have a Kickstarter as far as I'm aware. Development was started in 2017, the alpha released in 2018, and it entered Steam Early Access in 2021. And Valheim costs 15 quid currently with plans to increase it over time as more content is added, which they have shown they are more than capable of doing. The team behind Seven Days to Die should be ashamed of the product they have produced. They have spent over a decade of their lives making a tech demo. That may be slightly harsh, but the game is out now, so I can judge it freely. This game hasn't left alpha. They've added some higher poly models to the game, increased the resolution of some textures, removed the sexy nurse zombie, added jiggle physics to the female zombies. Don't ask why I was looking. Hold on, did I just... I don't want to admit to no I don't want to admit to noticing this, but did they add jiggle physics to this fuck to this thing's titties? Yes. For some reason, they've only given a 3D model to the cotton plant while leaving all the other plants the same. The lighting glitches all the time, zombies walk over each other. All this release has done is slap a new coat of paint on it, but the coat is so thin that you can still see everything underneath. They didn't even bother to add new loading screen images, for goodness sake. The model, like, they, they've changed, the, the cotton now has 3D models, I'll give it that. They've added a 3D model to the cotton plant. That, that's been a 2D texture for 11 years, and so they've added a 3D model for the cotton plant. <laughs> I haven't added a 3D <laughs> model for the flower, though. <laughs> but the cotton plant is at least 3D. <laughs> what is the lighting doing? What, what, what the actual, how do you spend 11 years on a game and have it look like this? 1.0 is out, this is the game from 7 years ago, that's the game now. I was a fucking bear! <laughs> oh look, oh there's 3D snow! 3D snow, most games can't do 3D snow. Bear! Somebody, the most egregious thing is uh, out the, the pausing, the speed at which the game will pause. So, or more specifically, the speed at which it will load the pause menu, which is that long. <laughs> it freezes. It, I jump so you can see when it freezes. So when I press it, then it's <laughs> then there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking long. There's a f how big is that bear? That's not. I I know a big bear when I see one, and that's not the size of a bear. Bears are not the size of cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking huge. Why is it so big? Honestly. I mean, it's animated pretty nice. I was just... And it looks... It's its a nice looking bear. I'll give it that. There's a nice looking bear model. Interjection bread here. Uh, I've just finished playing the game a little bit more just to, you know, prove... Just, so just to find out whether or not uh, I was being a little bit exaggeratory about some of the things that I've said, which I probably am. Um... But I didn't notice when I first played it, but I have now that when you first load up the game, or just when you load up the game, on the splash screen, it still says that the title is pre-release software. They haven't updated that to say it's full, it's, it's, it's not pre-release anymore. Because this either implies that it's not, it's still in a pre-release phase, or they have also just not been bothered to remove evidence of the fact that it's still in pre-release. Not only this, somewhat unrelated, but still minorly annoying. I don't know if minorly is a word. I've been working on this video for 
over 10 hours today. Um, shortly after, this, this is a loading screen, this is a splash screen, and it loads up into, well, it, it loads the original loading screen, and then load, well, it, it loads the original menu, but then spaffs on this new main menu that he's just got adverts for their merch and the other game. Uh, I very very briefly touched on the other game at the very end. So yeah, even this is lazy. It doesn't properly load. It, it doesn't. They haven't got rid of the pre-release thing, and it doesn't load prop into the into the menu properly because it loads into the old menu and then puts the new menu on top of it. And even when you press continue, it just takes you to the next menu. So all you're doing is the equivalent of pressing skip add when you press continue. Uh, this. I'm, maybe I'll interject again at some point, or maybe I already have, I'm not sure. Uh, this was just something that stood out to me that I just needed to make sure that I put in. I was going to call back to the beginning where I mentioned that they went from alpha to release, completely skipping the beta phase, and then come back around to say that this isn't a full release, it's a beta. But as I've been reviewing my thoughts on the game, it, it isn't even that. It's still an alpha, and a beta at best. This, of course, wasn't meant to be an exhaustive look at the game and its development. This was mostly just a rant that I made in one sitting. Uh, I played the game on stream the other day, and I'm shocked at what the game has become, or more specifically, what it hasn't become. My computer is making noises that I don't think it should do while playing an indie game. Especially one that's been in development for 11 years. But I cannot express this enough that this game took 12 years to make and will be in its 13th by the time the roadmap is finished. I would love to be able to revisit this game in a year or so and it be a game worthy of praise, but I don't see that happening. The Fun Pimps are a studio that I speculate are out of money, time, creative energy, and have been for a long while. The Fun Pimps overpromised what they could provide for the money they asked for, and I'm not going to say that was done maliciously. It's very probable that they were just excited to be working on a game and had all these ideas, and then people, as the public tend to do, got excited as well, and that led to a loop of promises and promised features and hype that could not be sustained on a budget of $500,000. I don't take back that they should be ashamed of what they've done. They're adults. They needed to take responsibility for what they did and scale everything back accordingly. Make a base game that is solid and then build from there. But as seen in which stretch goals were added and the fact that some of the pre-stretch goal features are still not in the game, they just picked random things that they thought would be cool from the list and half assed them in and then moved on to the next thing. I think there's something to be said about a line under the where's your money going banner on Kickstarter. We're too experienced to call indie, but still small enough to do the innovative and sometimes risky things that AAA studios are afraid to try. They claim to be too experienced to be called an indie. I assume they mean studio or game, but... I think they fundamentally misunderstand what being an indie dev is. It's not about experience, it's about being indie fucking pendant. At the time they wrote this, the fun pimps were around five people working a mix of part and full time, and I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like an indie studio to me. They describe themselves as highly experienced, and I know that this is a Kickstarter pitch, so they have to toot their own horn a little, but now it's beginning to look a lot like they're too full of themselves to admit that they don't know how to make a game. They want people to know they're very good at making games, and this isn't an indie game, this is the next big thing. So good, in fact, that they're going to spend 13 years on a three-year project. It's kind of interesting looking back from the future that one of the games that they showcase as an example of games they've worked on is Duke Nukem Forever. I am not a psychoanalyst. I'm not going to go too deep into this rabbit hole. And by that I mean I'm not going to go any further. It would be wrong of me to do that. I can't tell you how these people are thinking. I can't tell you why the game is like it is. I'm not doing that. That's for someone who is much more experienced in this kind of thing than me. I am just a rando on YouTube who thought it was at least worth mentioning. That being said, not to rub in that they don't know what they're doing, we can make assumptions that Seven Days to Die would have been partially inspired by the DayZ boom. 
Soviet Womble has done a number of good videos about this daisy like genre, so I'll let you watch those for a greater explanation. But one other game to come out of that is Unturned, which is a zombie survival base building game that differs a lot from Seven Days, but they do share some similarities. And if DayZ is the progenitor of these games, it's worth comparing them, especially since they are games that came out around the same time of each other. Unturned may not look like much, but it entered early access almost exactly a year after the alpha of Seven Days to Die was released. It was one of the most popular games of 2014, was free, has since been released on all major consoles, and most importantly, was the passion project of a 16 year old in Canada who made it on no budget. The fun pimps on the Kickstarter page claim to be people who are doing this as a passion thing. They're passionate about what they're doing, they've experienced, they're really enjoying what they're doing. They even make reference to the fact that when making the Kickstarter, what they had was apparently quite a lot for a Kickstarter. Maybe Seven Days to Die is still a passion project, and all these people who are making Seven Days have been working on other things in the background, and this is just something that they've been chipping away at for the past decade. But... I would argue that in that case, why is it not better? Because it doesn't look like a passion project. It looks like a game that they started working on in 2013, forgot about, and then realised they had to finish it. There may have been some development mishaps. There may have been some things behind the scenes that have caused problems. There may be all manner of things going on. These are living human beings after all. You know, the Stalker team are from Ukraine, and they're still making Stalker. I've never played Stalker, but from as far as I'm aware, it's a pretty decent collection of games, the Stalker series is. This is very much a all-over-the-place video, I know. I'm, I'm very much aware. I woke up the morning after I had played Seven Days to Die, and pretty much this entire script just came into my head, like it was a prophecy from God, and I was afraid that I would never be able to do anything else if I didn't write this down. So, I do apologise for how impromptu and probably very roughly made this is. I'm not very good at talking, I'm sorry that this is... This, is, this has been a ramble, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I just wanted to put it out there, okay? It's my channel, I can do what I want. Also, the zombie survival genre was already dying when this game first came onto Steam. Next! Oh, oh, I, 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 never, uh, I never mentioned that they now have an advert for their new game on the first of the two main menus, where it looks like they're trying to make Seven Days a brand like Hello Neighbor or FNAF. That's purely conjecture. Anyway, it's a 1v4 co-op survival base building game where one person plays the zombies and the other four has to survive. It, it, it seems like something that should have been in the, in the base game. Uh, don't buy it. There's no reason to, to, to buy it. it. Don't. It'll be a cash grab. Trust me. And if it's not, great. I'm happy for the devs that they made a good game. 